Today we're exploring one of Queen's richest neighborhoods, Forest Hills Gardens, where the city meets what looks like a British village. We'll have a local tour guide showing us around this enchanting neighborhood. You don't wanna miss it. You just walk under the train tracks here and bam, it's like you're in another world. It's like you're not in New York City anymore. Like ever since I was a kid, as soon as I step under those train tracks, it's like, look around you. Where are we? Is this New York? Is this even Queens? Back in the day, this was like all, all farmland, right? Because Brooklyn was a city. Queens was just farms. There was nothing out here. 1909, Queensboro Bridge opens up. The Long Island Railroad builds their tunnel under the East River. And you actually now have a commuter village. L-I-R-R, 20 minutes or less to Midtown Manhattan. I do, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I recognize this guy's face from somehow. Does that happen? Uh, I don't know. Maybe like once or twice a week. <laughs> I watch every video yeah. of yours. We're actually filming we are, right now. We are yeah. filming God, right this now. This is so crazy. Yeah, Where are you guys from? Germany. from Germany. Oh, nice to meet you, John. Wow. Nice to meet you. you know, bring them in from like Germany, from Europe. I'm like, how the hell did they find out about Forest Hills Gardens? Like, oh, it's John Barr. <laughs> in New York City for over 10 years now, and I don't think I've ever been so surprised about a neighborhood until the first time I came to Forest Hills Gardens and I and I said, how is this New York City? Like, like you're not even here, right? How is this, this New York City? This is not New York, look, we're walking in the middle of the street right now. No cars, no people. And right here, you made a cool point. Why does this street curve? Yeah, you see how the street curves right now? When they designed this, they wanted the streets to be peaceful and have like scenic beauty. And also, there's a, a practical reason, it slows down traffic. They don't want cars speeding through here like New Yorkers like to speed. Oh yeah. When I make my YouTube millions, I'm gonna move here. Yeah, it's funny how you singled out this house because like for years and years, this has been one of my favorite houses like on my favorite street. And you're like, oh yeah, I like this house. Well, yeah. well I said I wanna buy it. You wanna buy it, yeah. But I don't have the money. I used to dream as a kid, like as a, like 12 years old, seriously, I would walk around this neighborhood I'm like one day, I am gonna be so rich, I'm gonna buy that house or maybe I'll buy that one. And I'm an adult now, I'm still not buying them. Maybe some crypto? I don't know, just kidding guys, <laughs> just kidding. When people say that this looks British, there's actually some reason to that. Yeah, there's a really good reason. When they built this, they modeled it after a quaint English village with all the beautiful little Tudor homes and things like that. It was part of this movement of building garden communities. There was this British guy, Sir Ebenezer Howard, and he said, you know, if we if we build these beautiful little garden communities, we can let people de-stress, let them relax, let them have some parks and some nature, and that's going to sort of I don't know, I guess calm people down. I mean, I'm feeling pretty calm. This was my entrance after a long day in the city. I feel pretty calm. Pretty yeah. calm. There is one little issue that everybody tells me about Forest Hills. It is the parking situation because there's spots here, but you don't want to park there. You see this guy, he's got a placard. He's got a little piece of paper in the front of that car. Yeah. So that's giving him, he's probably a guest, he's visiting. They're giving him permission to be there, all right? If he doesn't have that, he's gonna come back and there's gonna be this big, gigantic yellow boot right here on the car and it's gonna cost like 200 bucks to get it off. My friend told me some guy got so crazy, he did not wanna pay the fine. He came back with a freaking blowtorch and he was, <laughs> he was literally trying to get the thing off with a blowtorch. All right, what should people know about the rules here about being here after dark? As soon as it hits like sundown, and I mean like exactly at sundown, they're gonna have a private security guard coming around here with a truck with flashing lights. Hey, what are you doing here? You gotta leave, park's closed. You have a nice little home. You got the, the chairs right there. The thing about this neighborhood that strikes me the most is just the quiet. Yeah. Like, you, you can hear a pin drop. You wouldn't think that you could jump on the Long Island Railroad and in 20 minutes you're in Midtown Manhattan. Less? Like it's like Less. 17 yeah, minutes. you might be right. This does give me some vibes of Fieldston in Riverdale, if you watch my Richest Neighborhood in the Bronx video. Those homes are bigger, but what this area lacks in size and more than makes up for in like the Tudor style architecture, just like everywhere you look. Like I don't need the super big mansion. I'll take the smaller British style home any day. I don't know about you. As a kid, I always liked the big ones though. I was like, yeah. get me the biggest house in the gardens. I want that when I'm a millionaire. Four to five million would get you three, four bedrooms here. Which, you know, compared to what you get in Manhattan, I think I might rather pay here yeah. than get some big apartment. Right behind me over here, guys, this little innocent looking building on the corner. Not so innocent. There was a guy, you might have heard of him, Anthony Weiner. 
congressman, ran for mayor, then got into some trouble sending pictures of himself, and I, I don't need to finish that. Anthony Weiner, the name says it all. You could call this the Castle District. I come up with a lot of cool names for this. This is unbelievable. I really love this style. Maybe in another lifetime I was British, I don't know. The people here are very particular about doing improvements to your homes once you buy them here. They are crazy strict. Best friend from childhood actually, his parents, they live around here and we were sitting out front one time uh, back in college and this guy comes up to us and he's like, hey, is your father home? He says to my friend, and he's like, well, I'm from the Forest Hills Gardens Architectural Standards Committee or something like that. And you know, by the way, your father widened his driveway by like three inches and he can't do that. Also the color that he chose for the paint that went like in between the bricks or something really, really, really minor that you and I would like not even notice. If you make any alterations without express written permission from them, they will make you go in and at your own expense, put it back. Which I mean, I guess is a good thing because if, if you could, they would have real estate developers come in here and just change everything up. It would completely lose its sense of style and community here. Exactly. Check this one out right here. It looks like a castle. It actually has its own name, Granston Tower. You know you've hit it big when the houses have their own names. Some of you have asked me about if I give tours of New York. I do not, but if you need a tour guide, Tim right here is the man. Check out his link directly below. You want to book an amazing tour of New York, trust me. Another way you can tell you're in Forest Hills Gardens, the street signs. Check out the street lamps, right? Yeah. You don't see those anywhere in New York City, right? Those are the old British country village little street lamps. If you were walking around here right now, this time of day, no GPS, no phone, could you find your way out of here? I absolutely have no clue where we are right now. We're just wandering some of the streets, taking it in. Like any street we see that looks cool, we're just walking by. Behind me here is one of the most famous addresses in comic book history. 20 Ingram Street, Forest Hills Gardens, the house of Peter Parker. Crazy thing is, like back in the 70s, just totally coincidentally, a family named Parker actually did buy this house <laughs> for a number of years. Perfect. So they didn't even realize that they were like a Parker family living in the Spider-Man house. Now imagine their son was named Peter. <laughs> that would have been weird. Forest Hill Stadium here, really famous in Queens for seeing live music. But you've got a little insider tip if you can't afford the price of admission. You can still kind of enjoy the concert, right? Yeah, like one time I was here, Dolly Parton, right? I'm a huge Dolly fan, but $75. I didn't really want to spend $75. You can kind of just hang out right here and you hear pretty much everything. I've actually seen residents put chairs out here, believe it or not, to just like hear the music without paying anything. Adriana is obsessed with Prince Tea House right in Station Square if you need something to do after you walk around. For all my true crime fans out there, there was a little dark New York history that happened here, right? Yeah, something pretty scary. Back on a cold winter's night back in uh, 1977, believe it or not, Son of Sam, you may have heard of this guy, serial killer. So there's a car like right here in Station Square. This uh, man and woman, they just came from seeing the movie Rocky. They're sitting in the car chatting and shots ring out. Woman tragically is killed, she dies, and the, the guy somehow survives. It's like a sad irony for me because this area looks so magical, but you had one of the most famous murderers in New York City history was hanging out right here. Right here. Now that we've shown you Queens, why don't you check out Manhattan's richest neighborhood video right here. A local girl and I go on quite the adventure in the Upper East Side. You don't want to miss this.